Hey folks, Mal the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with the Burma build for you. And we're continuing our Japanese defences. Specifically, we're moving on from our log barriers and our, our hidden bunkers and onto some trench lines. Now, to do this, I got sent some stuff a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, from uh, Zidides, yeah? Uh, Zidides, I'll put the link down below. They're a subsidiary and not the railway company that make all the scenics. But Zidides make hard foam terrain. Now, I've done a couple of videos on this before, but if you come down, you can see this is their stuff. Yeah, and it's hard foam terrain. And I've got a trench system. And what I'm going to do is they've sent me this and I want to sort of enhance it. Now, I've gone through this before, but basically I've got a couple of corners, a couple of T-junctions, a couple of straights, and about four end pieces. Now, with pieces like these, yeah, they are individual. Yeah, I could just flock them up and that sort of stuff and throw them on the table as is. But I, I want to extend these. I want to convert them. I want to do a lot more with these. Yeah, and so you say, all right, most, what are you going to do with them? All right, well, first off, I don't like lots of individual small pieces of trench systems. Yeah, they're fine, but I tend to find that they, they move around on the table and stuff like that. I'm not a massive fan of them. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them together. And to do that, basically, I'm going to base them. OK, and so I'm going to create bases for these. In fact, I already have a bit of planning and preparation there for you, folks. And so what we're going to do is we're going to base these up and I've arranged them in a couple of different ways. I've got some straights with an end piece. Yeah, I've got a curve here with a long piece. And then over here, what I'm going to do is something a bit different. Now I've got a T-junction. Now these T-junctions in trench systems, they're pretty uh, normal. They're communication trenches for going towards the rear lines and the communications and all that sort of stuff. In my case, yeah, I don't want to do that. You see... With the Japanese, okay, in Burma, they didn't really have long lines of trench systems. When we think of trench systems, we think of like First World War, you know? Uh, or if you think of linear defences, Atlantic War, Maginot Line, long linear defences. In Burma, the Japanese didn't operate like that because they were deep in the jungle. And so basically they made, uh, essentially, uh, forward bases, yeah? And what they did is they made circular entrenchments with the base in the middle. And so I actually like the idea of not using these to make sort of command trenches, but doing something different with them. And when it comes to what to do different with them, it's dead simple. I'm gonna basically take that, take that, add them together. And then once they're based, I'm gonna turn these bits into a bunker. Yeah, so it's got a forward sort of shooting point. And that's actually sort of in line in what they did in with the Japanese defences. I'll show some pictures later on, but that's the basic plan. Now, first thing that we've got to do is we've got to base these up. Now, I'm going to be using this. Yeah, this is three mil laminated MDF. It's back of a wardrobe or something like that. Yeah, I've got a load of them, but basically they're really good for terrain. Nice and sturdy, yeah, three mil. And I've already cut the pieces out. So, here we go, the pieces. Here are my pieces. I've already templated them up. And to show you the sort of thing that we're going to be doing, if I get that one, yeah, and then we do that, and then we do that. You'll see that I've already designed this to sort of work with the piece. And once these are actually glued down, yeah, they'll be a lot sturdier. They'll be a lot easier for me to start doing my conversion work on. And I'm going to do doing bits and bobs, adding jungle stuff to it, blending it into the Burma build. And like I say, adding on that watch clip, the adding on the watch clip. What's the term I'm bloody looking for? Oh, pardon my language. Uh, Adding on the bunkers and that sort of stuff. Brain's fried today, folks. Better, I just better stick with terrain. Yeah, now to actually stick the terrain down, dead simple. PVA, hard foam to MDF, it'll glue it fine. Yeah, so we take this out. And when I glue this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do spots. Yeah, now I don't want you to think put long lines up here. But when, watch, look, when you put lines of PVA down, as they dry, they shrink and it can cause warping, especially with things like linear trench systems and stuff like that. So in the case of this, if I can get any PVA out of here, of course, it's playing up back in a flash. And here we go, all flowing nicely. But basically what I'm doing is just putting a couple of spots in. I don't need massive amounts to actually fix it down. And once it's actually uh, painted and that sort of stuff, it'll bond pretty well anyway. And this PVA is quite thick. So basically what I'm gonna do is get the rest of this out i have a feeling there's a thick bit in this oh strain to get pva out what's going on right and simply turn it over place it down give it a little wiggle 
And that's all there is to it. All I've got to do mainly is make sure that this back lines up nice and neat with the edge. Yeah, so I've got a nice straight edge. I can always put a little, because this is foam, I can always give this a little stand, make sure it, it meets nice and clear. But basically, there we go. Next bit, I'm gonna drop that one onto there. Yeah, and then once that's in, we can blend these edges once it's dried. All right, so, let's get some PVA on here. Come on. It really doesn't wanna come out, does it? Jesus, what? There's a blockage in here, I'm sure of it. Right, that'll do. I'll sort that off camera. A little bit of PVA. And I'll just give that a bit of a wiggle. And there it is. Yeah, now obviously you can see there's a bit of a join line there and that sort of stuff. We can blend all that stuff in. I'm not worried about it in the slightest. I mean, this is hard foam, so, you know, once it's, it's dried, I'll be able to just blend it down. That's the plan. Anyway, right, my next job is I need to get all these based. I'll see you in a mo, folks. Table's absolutely swamped with terrain. I'm having a great time and these have turned out well. Right, as you can see, all my pieces are down here. They're looking great and they're all modular. Yeah, a little bit of sanding to clean them up and bring them together. But essentially what I've done is I've converted 10 small modular pieces into five pieces. Yeah, and obviously you've got that one. And I've been able to get my curves in. Yeah, as you can see, it looks really much better like this as one continuous thing. But I wanna take this a little bit further. Now you'll notice that we've got, basically we've got this, we've got a long curve here. Yeah, and then we've got these two, I turn these two communication trenches and captain for our bunkers. Yeah, and so we need to do our bunkers next. Now I'm gonna do the bunkers in the same style as I did the watch call it, as I did the, uh, as I did the normal sort of hidden log bunkers, but I want these to be raised up slightly, which also means I need to do some savaging with the foam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a play with one of them, figure it out, and then once I've figured it out, yeah, I'll record how I'm gonna do it for the second one. So I'll see you once I've figured it out, guys. So a little bit of fiddling, but it's come together lovely. Let me show you what I've got, yeah. You recognize the front of the bunker from our standard bunkers, but as you can see, nice and raised up. Yeah, PVA is still a little bit wet. There's a mixture of PVA and hot glue on this one. Yeah, obviously you've got the foam inserts. I've got three levels of foam. And then I've got the back entrance, which I've reinforced with logs, but it's basically just a bit of balsa wood. Yeah, which I've drawn some lines on to get some planking, just so I've got a back entrance. And as you can see, much like with the watch clip with the hidden bunkers, bevel it down a little bit, and then all I've got to do is just put some filler on this and blend it in. But I didn't want to do that until you saw how the construction went. So let me take you through it because this is basically the pivotal moment of this build. Yeah, obviously we've got our trench. We put it together, we put our end cap on. We're going to start it off. Now, I want a little bit longer here for my logs are going to go here and then the bulk of the foam is going to go here. So I've cut a few pieces and you'll notice they've got a little bevel on them. I've dry fitted them. Yeah, that's how I know this this build's gonna go a little bit quicker because I've already done the hard work of cutting everything. So that one goes in there. Right, once I've got the level for my watch color that I want my logs at, it's time to start cutting it out. Yeah, and so yeah, I'm just gonna use this. I've gotta be careful because this stuff is tough as you can see. Probably the toughest polystyrene I've ever worked with, to be truthful. Yeah. So I don't want to lose a finger. Really dense stuff this. Yeah, break that down, bring it round to here. Almost lost a finger. There you go. Very quickly just take a bit of this off. Uh -uh. 
and that'll do for now. Right, so I'll cut it down, bring it up, sort of see how it's now flat and level with that foam. Yeah, so next job, hot glue. Yeah, and what we're going to do is start putting our logs in. Smaller one there. Out. Next one. And again. That's a bit long. That's all right. And then we've got another long one go with it. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. Four logs down. Next up, we need to do our angled logs to do the fire slit. So once again, come on, glue down. Once again, we're gonna go along here. And then with our second log, Along. And we're going to go here. Yeah, like that. Got to make sure I don't burn my fingers. I'm sort of putting the logs down, but I'm not putting them straight on the hot glue. I'm sort of putting them slightly to slide and pushing into it. That means I'll get the hot glue on the side where it's going to get covered over with the filler and it's not poking out where you can see it on the logs. Now, once that's in, yeah, next thing is we've got to put our next two blocks in, which is this one. Push that in that. And then we want this one on top of it. Now, very quickly, just while I'm here, put a bit of a bevel on both of these. Not worried about that, because it's fixable. I'll fill it. Yeah, and then finally, we need to put our final logs on. Yeah, so hot glue along here. Hot glue along here. And then, one, two, I need a long one, do three on that one. Let's move those up a little bit actually. I'll do that. Yeah. Right, next job. Just put a little bit of PVA on here. A little bit of water. Yeah, and it's just going to go in, just help those bond. Yeah. Same little bit down here. And same on the other side. Right, next off, we need to do the actual door. And that's just poked out a little bit too far. So clean that up. Then a little bit of balsa. We want to push that in. Oh, that's a bit tight actually. We just trim that down a little. Yeah, that's going to fit there nicely. So, a bit of PVA on the back of that. And around the edges. Drop that in there. And then we need a log across the top. Probably better for hot glue for this one, but I can always pin it in place with a bit of hot glue. In fact, I think that's what I'll do. Holding that there, a little bit of hot glue here. Just hold that in place, spin it around to the other side, same again. 
just on that little blob there just to hold it in place yeah and then the next thing that we need to do is we just need to out just need to make the frame of the door yeah so i have to cut these down still a little bit uh clippers 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 where are thou clippers Yeah, a bit more. So that one can go in there nicely. And drop that on there. Trim it down a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. So. And put another log across there. Yeah, let's go for a thinner one. Just to hide the top of those. So, uh, yeah, that should work. Or oh, could I do with a slightly longer one? Let's go for a slightly longer one. So, glue on that. There we go. And that's it. Oh, very carefully. I've knocked me, me upright. Just straighten that up. And there we go. So, easy to construct, as you can see. Yeah, it's a bit iggledy piggledy as you can see, but once it's blended, which we're going to do now, it'll look great. So we've got a piece, yeah, we're going back to the one that's dried a bit more than that one, yeah, and we're just going to blend it in much like we did with our watch clip, with our, uh, with our bunkers. So just coming in. Dropping filler down onto it. Yeah, I'm just going to keep dropping filler down onto this until it's all sort of blended in, if you know what I mean. So, big block there. A little bit along here, just to blend in that bit of wood. And over here, put a blob onto there. Now remember this is going to be disguised with jungle stuff as well, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then a little bit on the top, I'll blend over this bit. And much like with the watch clip with the bunkers, all we're going to do now is use a little bit of water. Let me just grab that. Uh, oh, careful, bicycle, don't spill everything everywhere. Yeah, a little bit of water. Just start smoothing it out and blending it in. Mm -mm. Yeah, and that's pretty blended in for me. Now, next thing I want to do with the filler is just very quickly, you'll see some little join lines just on here. Yeah, so let's just smear a bit of filler into there. 
smear a bit of filler into there just to get a, a nice transition. And then just going around the edge, yeah, where we've got this bit here, and all I'm doing is just blending it in so we get a nice, easy transition from the ground up to our, our sort of embankment. A little bit of water. Thing. Yeah, get that rinse. Next thing is we need stiff, cheap plastic brush, wet it down, and then we can just use this to clean off the excess filler off our woodwork, just so we can really show our logs off. And round to the front. And there we go. There we are. So, there you go. Once it's all blended in, log bunker. Looking great. Yeah. Now all we need to do is I need to blend in the back of this. I've got to go through all of these, blend these edges. And then once that's, do oh, that's done, we've got to go back to our little one that we've just done and do that one. So I'll see you when we're done. Yeah. Now my mass amount of fillering is all dry and it turned out great. Come on down. Right, here we have my trench systems. We'll start with the simple stuff. So simple end corner, you can see how that's blended in lovely. Yeah, it's sturdied them up. Yeah, added a little bit of weight to them as well, which is great with modular pieces. And you can just see in there that I've just sort of filled some gaps. Now with this being the end and place like that, we're gonna have some herb mix and stuff in there to disguise this, so no stress. But above all, yeah, much with like this piece, this other end piece, exactly the same, we've got the blending. You can see a little bit of a lip, but remember this is gonna be under my turf and all that sort of stuff, so perfectly fine. But much like on this one, yeah. We've essentially, what I've done is, I've used the base to combine the pieces, yeah. I've basically just filled the gaps and blended in, and I've retained all that lovely trench work detail and saved myself a ton of time in the process. Yeah, nice, hard, firm, gonna paint up great. And then finally, our actual two little bits of conversion work. Yeah, so log bunkers turned out great. Yeah, if I turn it around to the back, you can see the entrance, and once that's painted up, that'll be fine doesn't really need to be that fancy. To be truthful, the entrance to the bunker is only going to be seen by the player who's using it, and only half the time, but yeah, it's nice to have that there. Now, overall, these are looking great. The next stage is we need to paint them up. Yeah, let me just start putting them together because they look good. Ah, uh, I don't know what to do. Yeah, now I am actually planning, yeah, I might pick up a couple more pieces of this stuff. Yeah, just so I can convert it up now, I've had a play with it, because it is quite good. And I reckon with a few more pieces, I can make really a massive trench system. Yeah, especially with the converting, if I could convert maybe an artillery post or, you know, command post or something like that. At the minute, I've just gone for basically, utilize the trench lines that came with the set and just do a little bit of converting. Yeah, but it's modular. And secondly, the pieces from a manufacturer they're easy to get hold of yeah so it's easy to expand but this is where i am right now now the next thing that we need to do is basically start the painting and the flocking process now the painting process ain't that fancy yeah it's standard burma build stuff you know so with my standard uh, earth brown dark brown for the woodwork yeah and then i'm going to put my herbs around here and some around here some in here yeah, and that will give my jungle floor effect. Now you've seen that plenty of time, so we'll do that in photos, and then we'll come back for the actual foliage and that sort of stuff, because that's more of a critical stage when it comes to this sort of 
terrain. And I'll explain why when we get there. But in the meantime, let's get stuck in. So the trenches are all herbed up and everything. Stained, they've come out brilliantly. And when you line them up and add them together, yeah, as you can see, you can see how this has suddenly become one sort of cohesive, really nice structure, but it's not in the Burma style, which is what we've got to do next, which is basically the greenery. Now, uh, standard uh, Burma style is this sort of thing. Yeah, but I'm avoiding trees. Okay, I only want plastic plants and the standard sort of clump on these pieces. The reason for that is that these are going to be quite challenging to store. Yeah, and I don't want to be adding sort of like trees and stuff to them, making them even more difficult. Yeah, not in the middle of the trench anyway. Yeah, and so keeping them to the plastic plants, yeah, will make them a lot easier to store. Now, on top of that, I've already started. Yeah, and I've started adding just basically two varieties of plastic plants because there's going to be a lot on these. and I only need a general feel and I'll put some odd spots in for a bit of variation. But if you look, you'll notice a couple of things. One, I've done a lot of clumping with them. So they're not evenly spread and they're not uniform. Yeah, singles, singles, combinations, mass clumps. OK, the next thing is I'm specifically putting them yeah, on these trench lines in these dips. OK, now the reason for that is so that once again, the height doesn't rise too much, because what I can do is when it comes to storing these, I can just have some simple polystyrene blocks that I drop into the trenches that sit higher than my actually plastic plants. And then I can place pieces on top of each other without them worrying of crushing everything. Well, that's the plan anyway. So with that in mind, I'm going to carry on just adding these clumps. I'm then going to go through the standard greenery phase. We'll do it in photos because you've seen it plenty of times. Yeah, and I'll bring them back when they're done. Cracking on time. There's a lot more foliage involved in doing up jungle trenches than I, I originally imagined. But check them out. OK, these have come out great. Yeah, much like our previous pieces. Yeah, I'm following my 90-10 rule. Yeah, I've taken them to 90%. Yeah, and there's still about 10% to do on them, which is sort of my process with the Burma build. Now, uh, unlike the bunker video, yeah, you can see on this one, yeah, my bunkers are a lot more hidden. Yeah, so I'll focus down on that. So there's not so much work I need to do on hiding the bunkers. Yeah, but in the case of these, yeah, one thing I did notice is we've got quite stark gaps. Yeah, uh, where the join lines are. So I want to make sure that I bring a little bit extra more clump and lichen into these areas just to hide those join lines. Yeah, what I need to do is use something nice, soft and fluffy and basically do two lines at each of the lines so that when they come together, they fit. So I'll probably hot glue those, then seal them rather than PVA so I get some very specific positioning. Obviously, I've got to do the, 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 the general browning to sort of tone it in a little bit yeah, and blend the edges. That's something simple. And there's the woodwork that I'm going to touch up once I've sat down and had a play and that sort of stuff. But the jungle trenches are done and it's a hell of a line. Yeah, uh, taking those T, two T junctions and turning them into bunkers is, it's turned out brilliant. You know, you can literally see how this would drop into a jungle set. Yeah, few clumps around here, that sort of stuff. And straight away, it's an awesome set. The pieces themselves, they've been a pleasure to work with. Yeah, taking the stress out of having to do all the actual big foam work and do the woodwork and just convert them and paint them up and that sort of stuff. It's made them really, it's made this project really easy to do. Now, obviously, these are the Zitides foam trenches. Uh, you can make your own trenches. There's videos in the projects playlist and the let's make playlist on how to make your own foam trenches. We've done that before, but this was really good from the from the sake, from the sake of getting it down and focusing on the converting. 
and that sort of stuff. Plus, make sure everything's modular and fits without all the hassles of templates. Words treat. And they've turned out a treat, to be perfectly honest. So I've still got the, the watch up, the 10% to do on that. Yeah, you'll see that coming up when we round this up and I bring and I do a full display of the entire set. Once we've done our artillery to place ex and placement, which is coming next week. Now in the meantime, guys, if you've liked this, then throw a like on it. If you've got anything to say, any questions, anything like that, get down on the comments. And if you've enjoyed me being back on your screen and making this terrain as much as I have, then please consider Watch Club supporting me. You can jump down below and you can jump on Patreon, pledge a dollar a month, yeah. You can jump on PayPal, send a one-off or jump on the Amazon wish list and get me something for the studio. However you support me, it all does help keep me in here, the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me making this beautiful stuff and showing you how to do it as well. So, I appreciate your support, guys. Keep tuned. Next week's video, we're tackling the emplacement. All the best, yeah? Yeah.